Welcome to Women's Brew, where women talk about beer. In today's episode, we're putting pen to paper and running through our creative processes for reviewing beer. I'm Joanne and this is Tori. Hello, hello. And we're two beer-loving women on a mission to get more people drinking and talking about great beer. Come join us. I'm apologising from the offset because I'm sick again. So, (laughs) so when I go on mute or I start uh, uncontrollably coughing, that is going to be it. But I mean, touch wood, it's still not COVID at the moment. The alcohol, the alcohol will kill it off. It'll be that's that's what I'm hoping for tonight, actually. Um, so yeah, this is it's fun because like I feel like we should sort of stipulate. Obviously, we're going to talk about like we've said reviewing beer, but what does that actually mean like what do we actually mean when we say reviewing beer now you know I hate the uh the word influencer I hate that word for me anyways I don't like it uh or beer personality or any of that like I'm not trying to neither of us are trying to teach you how to be wildly successful on on Instagram or any of the (laughs) socials or anything like that like when I don't know the secret to be wildly successful (laughs) Instagram or anything Joe could probably teach you about TikTok but that's not what we're doing today I mean <laughs> I'm not wildly successful on there I haven't gone like TikTok famous or anything I mean people recognize you from TikTok I, I, I think that's, that's wildly true successful. actually <laughs> so uh yeah I mean uh, I, I can't really I'm not speaking for Joe I'm speaking for me I'm not necessarily going to teach you how to uh be successful on the socials by any means because I don't possess that talent per se myself so it's more just sort of how to develop your own enjoyment and confidence in writing about beer because um, I don't know about you, Joe. I I personally, for a very long time, like I really took enjoyment of every beer I had. I sort of I wanted to write about it. I wanted to sort of give feedback. I didn't know what to call it. I didn't really want to call it a review because I'm not really in a position to be reviewing per se. So I I personally call it feedback. Um, so that's kind of what we thought we'd cover our processes yeah. for how we do it I don't know do you call it something specific to beer you notes take my, I take my beer, beer notes. notes I'm not necessarily you know that's pretty good reviewing it. That. yeah I'm not necessarily reviewing it and saying whether it's the best or the worst or whatever it's what I think about it and it's my notes on tasting because I think one of the really gra- so craft beer we as generally as craft beer drinkers are drinking it because we want to have all of those interesting flavors and aromas and the taste and all these really interesting things that brewers are putting into these beers. And the joy of it is picking that apart and finding what they've put into your glass and why they've done that and why it's so enjoyable to you or why it isn't. Um, and so it's taking notes of that and that helps you to be able to understand what you like and what you don't like and to find what you like again it sounds really obvious like calling it beer notes Mm. but like I just didn't never cross my mind to call it that and so I was always just like I'll just call it feedback because it's the feedback that I'm giving about a particular beer but yeah I for some reason it always kind of makes me cringe when I say like reviewing because it feels like there's a connotation on it of like I I think the connotation it feels for me is it's like I'm a professional and you should take what I'm saying and I suppose at some like... type of level and and I don't feel like every like you said I mean everyone kind of tastes things different mm-hmm. things land differently for different people so like if I say I don't like something you know that's not somebody else should by no means kind of take what I say and be like she doesn't like it I don't like it I mean you could see if you normally agree with me that maybe it's not going to be something for you but I always find if even if people that I tend to mainly agree with if I see that someone said something less than enjoyable about a beer if it sounds interesting to me I still want to try it for myself Um, and I I kind of make my own mind up about that so I just want to kind of caveat before we go into anything else about sort of the rest of this that by no means are we advocating that we are profession well well, some of us are more professional than (laughs) other but we are not sort of of saying like whatever we say is gospel this is our you know reviews and it should be taken as the only word or anything else whatever take that as you will (laughs) yeah we're not we're not beer judges in a professional sense or in a voluntary sense (laughs) although you have volunteered to be a beer judge before 
Oh, I got asked to be a beer judge. Yeah, yeah, you volunteered. Yeah, no, actually, actually, you were approached. To be fair, you are. That's why. That's why actually, I started to I say. No, you're right. That's why actually, I started to I say did. we're not professionals. Okay, one See, of us is not to, a yeah, professional. So, <laughs> so because I was trying to be like, so you know, so there is the beer judge certification um, program. You're trying to be humble if you're interested in that, because <laughs> because the beer the people that are BJCP trained they're not paid; they are volunteers. So I was trying to kind of get that across in that that's different than if it is your job and you are paid to review beers um they are volunteers but actually you're right I I have actually, yeah, you actually to have. do that I you have. have I did yeah. do that I did. you did you did do that um <laughs> yeah I, you're obviously you're obviously far more qualified than I am that's why I, I, I started to say we are not professionals and then I was like hey I don't but, <laughs> but I don't think you need to be qualified no. either. Like all of us taste, <laughs> all of us like like things. Oh, well, most of us taste. Uh, yeah. Like maybe you don't have to. I don't know. Maybe you don't have taste buds. We don't want to be don't, taste you buddies. Don't. I don't you know. Don't. Um, you know, if you're drinking beer and you're talking about it, it's usually because you are tasting it. You want to discuss what's in your glass. Um. And that, and everyone is different in what they taste and what they enjoy. You don't need to have qualifications to be able to enjoy a beer. Exactly. And and I think there's so many different ways that you can approach yep. the process of making beer notes. So obviously we're just going to cover what we do because um, we're really kind of only qualified to speak best about what we do. Yep. So, and boy, do we chat shit about what we do very well. So <laughs> we, do. we really do. <laughs> Whether we it. execute it as well yeah. as we chat about it, I don't know. But um, we are definitely, yeah. that is within our capabilities. As a starting point, I don't know about you, but I think it's sort of prudent to cover the structure elements of it and how you kind of structure those things, how you make your notes before we actually get into the steps of opening a beer. Mm -hmm. And we've got we've got two of the same beers that we're going to sort of talk about and then one different one. Um, But before we even get into that, we get down to the structure. So um, my sort of viewpoint on that is just I think everyone needs to find their own voice and and what works for them so when I say that uh the starting point is where are you going to post it are you going to post it how are you actually going to do this so I know Joe, that you've got one of these because I got the idea from you when I first started Uh, writing things down yeah I've got beer journals beer journals (laughs) mine's full I need a new one this so if you're watching the video (laughs) I've got one this is one of my archive folders. So I started getting, and I started doing this, like I used to take my notes on my phone when we were out. And, you know, that like life has changed since when I first started doing this. Um, we used to go to, to frequently go to different bars and try lots of beers. And I'm like taking notes on my phone and my battery would die and I wouldn't have anywhere to take it. So I wouldn't have anywhere to write it down because my battery would run out uh, on my phone. Um, now, batteries are working a lot longer on phones than they you were got, then. And you got the uh, portable chargers. And you got portable chargers. Yeah, there wasn't so many of those. Around. Like that, yeah, this is why they became about because people's phones run out quickly. So I, I needed to find like a manual way to do it. So I found these kind of small... Um, they're, they're smaller than A5. They're probably the same height as A5, but they're slimmer. Um, and it's in what is called a traveler's notebook, which is you kind of have a cover and then it has elastics and you can put inserts of these notebooks into it. So I had those and I could fill them in and I'd leave little slots for my photos. Um, if you're watching the video, let's find a good one. Find a good page for you. And I found this was like a really kind of therapeutic and mindful way of like doing it later like I'll put my pictures in oh I'll that's nice add, you know I like I like a bit of craftiness and and um I haven't got one in here but I'll put like fancy colored tapes down the side and you know I'll add different colors to it with with pens and things just to make it like a bit nice to look back at because I like to look back at this and be like oh yeah I had that beer and it tasted and it was really good and I like, and then it brings back your memories of like a good day and things like that um I've done quite I've got quite a few of these little books that I filled up now um and I have archive folders <laughs> with them in this is one of them I'm I need to buy a new one because I've run out of space in my second one um but 
yeah I just really like those because you can look back and enjoy what you've had previously yours has nice photos mine's like yeah. literally just writing but you can do that too but... like it depends mine on is just like. writing but I do I do change the color up every so often yeah. because I would get like bored so I'd like start with pink and then I'd be like oh I only have black to hand now so then I'll write that and then I go oh it's too much black in there now let's let's go blue and let's go green and yeah yeah <clears throat> but I don't I think the photos are a nice touch but as, I mean for me I've always been a person that likes to physically write things down yeah. um, but I never really started doing a beer journal until you kind of sort of convinced me that it was like a really good thing to do um because I was like oh I don't really want to take a notebook out and I'm a bit like oh yeah. what was that there is, is that, that a bit weird like is that weird to do and then after talking to you I was kind of like yeah I don't really care I'll just take a beer notebook and I mean obviously I don't do it when I'm going out <clears throat> for like proper social night yeah if you're just like sitting that, chilling but... drinking with your friends you don't you're not more bothered about writing out about what you're drinking then that's you know that's fine but like it's quite I quite like it I quite like doing it I find it easier to physically write things down yeah. as well like I'm slower at it but I find that I'm slower at it in the sense of obviously when you're handwriting you get if you're yeah. doing too much hand cramps and all that but I find it's just easier than texting out notes and I find that I actually reference it a lot more than I do my actual digital right, note. I mean, I, I will think... do digital notes. It's just not my preferred method. I use the digital notes for when I'm out with friends and I yeah. don't cover as much ground as yeah. I do in a beer notebook. So like in my notebook, I'll do uh, the date, the name of the beer, the style, the brewery, <clears throat> depending on like where I am in the situation. I'll put down like the price point, the serving size and the ABV. Just out of sheer curiosity to yeah. kind of say like, this is how much roughly it costs for something like that. Um, I will put like the place that I drank it slash where did I purchase it from um, sometimes it's different sometimes obviously it's the same I'll, I'll put down the hops used if they list the hops um, any other sort of adjuncts or notable ingredients that that are there that's worthwhile noting sometimes if they list yeast for example and it's something interesting I'll put that down as like this is the yeast they use it's an interesting yeast I'll put the serving type <coughs> i.e was it a bottle, a can, a growl, a draft? Like, what was it? Then I get into the, you know, appearance, smell, taste, mouthfeel, drinkability, which obviously that's something that's personal to me as an individual. Like, not everyone's going to have the same sort of experience. Um, and then I, I finish up with notes and then my overall rating out of five. But I'm really rubbish with ratings out of numbers because I find it really difficult to rate things on a scale because I don't, it requires me to remember every single thing I've ever put at that same right. like what is always going to be a five what is always going to be a one and I feel like that's just really difficult to measure for me yeah so yeah something that doesn't taste as good as what my normal five is but I'm having a really good time that might be like oh cool suddenly it's a four or a five now so I'll just do the best I can but it definitely changes I think but, yeah. very detailed I like yeah. that uh, yeah because it takes so much time it's such it does a take a lot of time right it does take a lot of time so mine are much shorter and I think mine ended up being shorter she says opening the book up again because I when I was first writing these out and I kind of got myself a little format that I this this is the way that I like writing about it um because it would fit in an untapped box <laughs> It was short. It would fit in that box. They've actually increased the characters nowadays, so you can write a bit more. That's exciting. Um, but I did a tasting course a few years ago now, and the guy that ran that would categorize his beers by the standout like ingredient in them. So they would be like, is it hop forward? Is it malt forward? Is it yeast forward? Is it, like, is it something else? Is it, you know, raspberry forward or, you know, orange forward like what uh, shouts jam, the most? like jammy forward like what's the thing that really hits you about this beer so I like to do that just so that I kind of in my mind that's kind of how I've categorized them with other beers so I'll start with that and then I go into appearance aroma and taste and so that can be really brief I mean they can it can get really long when there's lots of things to say you know when there's a lot going on in the color and there's loads of um, carbonation bubbles and there's a lot in the aroma and there's complex flavors developing in in the flavor um so there can be a lot or it can just be really short but I like to hit all of those points like all of the, the three areas 
appearance aroma and taste because then you're kind of covering everything but you can still keep it quite brief and then you're not spending all your time either writing in your book or on your phone because partners get really annoyed about that (laughs) yeah they definitely do um I do try to sort of like there's a lot of detail there and some of it it's like I'll just fill in while I'm there I'll just fill in the key things that I need to while I'm there um because I'll know later when I go home like well I'll I mean I'll have a photo of it so it's like well I know that I've had that out of a can or I've had it on on tap or whatever so it's like I don't have to necessarily list it all there right then in there um which is good I kind of play it by ear what I find is when we run through kind of our processes what I find most difficult is the spacing um because when we like i said when we run through our processes it will kind of make sense why that's the most biggest pain for me with the physical writing down of things um but yeah i mean like you don't necessarily have to have a beer journal like literally i've had times where um to be fair i, I try to buy i know that obviously you don't want to use that much paper it's not environmentally friendly and all that so i do try to get like notebooks that are recycled paper and i do try to do like recycled things when possible um but I have bought cue cards because I was trying to learn uh, an- another language. So I bought um, these note cards mm-hmm. and I find that sometimes if I was just sitting around and I, you know, my notebook was full, I didn't have a new notebook or I didn't have any paper to hand. I'll just use one of these and it worked quite well. Or if I was trying to do a comparison between stuff, um, I would have sort of a note card for each. Oh yeah. That's thing. Good idea. So, I mean, don't shy away from, you know the 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 note cards that's you or even literally sticky notes I've got loads of sticky notes because of work so sometimes if I'm you know speaking to you and we're doing something or I'm doing a drink along or something that's a little bit more less focused on the writing aspect of it but I still want to capture it I'll either you know open up a draft email in my in my gmail um, and start making notes there or a word doc or a notepad on, on my laptop on my phone or literally grab a good old sticky note if that's what happens to be the closest thing to me so yeah the notes app on your phone might be where you keep them I like for my digital notes I like Evernote um which is like a groceries I think or recipes and so you can make notebooks and then keep your notes in the notebook so I have a beer notes notebook in my Evernote um, and a different card for each one. And I have now started putting little tick boxes. So if I'm like, if I'm out somewhere quick and like, if you're at a beer festival, there isn't somewhere where you can lean to write into your, into your beer journal, I'll take it on my phone and transfer it over later. Um, I've ended up adding little tick boxes and like I tick off when I've added it to untapped and I tick off when I've added it to my journal. You can get really involved in this people. I was say, like, that's so thorough. There can, proce- that can be processes. Incredibly thorough. But I think yeah. that's part of like when you're defining the structure of how you want to do it. And that's yeah. not saying that you're married to it once you've you've sort of started yeah. out. Like if I if I thought I think I made some changes along the way, to sort of like how I did it initially, and then I'd be like, oh, actually, I wanted to add this little bit to it, or oh, oops, I forgot to add that bit. Totally forgot about it because it wasn't relevant to the beer that I was drinking. Yeah. You're not married to it. You can change it up yeah. kind of anytime you want to. Um, but I do think you kind of have to define the structure of like, and, and the use case, really, the use case. Are you looking to put things on social media? Are you looking to get readers slash followers slash whatever? Because more consideration is going to have to be taken into, you're going to have to take more into consideration doing that yeah. than you are just writing for yourself for your own notes, because you you are going to have to think of length. Length is less of a concern when you're doing it for you, mm-hmm. or if you're doing it for something like a blog post, like obviously my notes are quite extensive, but then I'm the type of person, which everyone probably already knows. I do like writing lengthier things. Um, I like getting detailed. I like doing that and I think that's just more of my my background relationship of writing than it is sort of what I what I can and can't do I don't know but if you're doing a blog post or you're doing something like that like yeah of course word count can be higher than maybe if you're posting on some of the social media things because you when you're reading it on Instagram a you're only allowed so many characters but b people are on there mainly for photos they'll read a bit but they're not on instagram to sit and read a full length piece quite frankly like even trying to fit it in with your because then you have to consider hashtags there's so much that you have to consider in there so i would say like when you're creating your structure obviously write stuff down 
throw it in the bin and start again if you need to but really where your starting point is going to be is going to be determined on what you want to get out of it what your use case is um don't know if you've got anything to add to that um twitter and untapped are incredibly short in their characters so you're going to want to be real brief on those if that's where you want to put things is there a bit um, twitter <laughs> twitter is massive is there a bit yeah. i don't i don't i don't tweet i don't really i've i've tried to get into it i'm i'm not a what do, what do you i don't really get it like beer twitter is it like they take a photo and then it's like i mean people like good i mean <laughs> you was can, bad. i mean I, I don't think people generally put reviews up so much on twitter it's more like chatting about okay and where you're going and things like that but Fair. you can um there is a feature in untapped where you can send like it all send it to send twitter. it to your twitter so if that's what you've got switched on, you want to make sure that it doesn't cut off um, partway through. So yeah, that's that you, sometimes it needs to be shorter. Sometimes you can do, you know, a whole blog post. I see. I was, I was like envisioning people like giving their feedback on Twitter and I'm like <laughs> of a beer, and I'm like, that's gonna take from. I mean, I don't use Twitter, but what I know of Twitter, that's gonna take a lot of tweets. <laughs> get the photo that it's like part one of five and then no, like, no you just Two. do it that's the thing you've got to do it so short that it's just one tweet that is yeah I, that would be a challenge Three. for me that's a challenge for me i guess you could always write up something screenshot it here's another option oh, yeah, write something that. up take a screenshot of it and then post your screenshot <laughs> you could do i've that, definitely yeah. done that i've <laughs> definitely done that when i wanted to put something on instagram but it wasn't going to fit on instagram mm. um or i wanted to sort of the full post was in my uh, blog, but I wanted yeah. to sort of share the main part of it. I've definitely taken a screenshot and shared it just so people can get the gist of it without having to go over to my blog. Um, but yeah, that is that makes sense. Anything else to add before we actually open a beer? Because I feel like it's been ages and we haven't actually cracked a beer open. No, we need to open a beer now. <laughs> All right. So the first one that I think we're going to do is Braybrook's Wildflower lager i'm excited because i love it very book i just i i don't again i genuinely just don't feel like i've had a bad beer from them like ever i think so and and that's coming from people that were like i don't like lagers yeah. like last yeah. year not not yeah. that we didn't like them but it's like we don't prefer them and now yeah. i'm like anything braybrook does i want 100 percent love it and it's all interesting like they've they've yeah. found a way to make lagers so 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 interesting Ooh, this right. is an interesting smell. So, before you actually get into that, shall we talk about our processes and we'll walk through our processes? Yes. As we do it. So, what is your step one? Uh, pour the beer into a glass. <laughs> All right. No, but seri- no, um, no, no, no. Like, some people may still be drinking the beer out of a bottle or a can. You need Fair. to put it into a glass. Like, always put your beer into a glass you can see it it's going to open up the aromas and flavors like beer 101 we're going right back to the beginning make sure you're putting it in a glass <laughs> that is fair and and yeah i yeah when i have to drink it out of a can <laughs> if i'm camping and there's no glasses or something like that why are you not taking wrong? plastic glasses with you <laughs> i do i and that's it as i always do but it's like if i've gone someplace and I've not, I've thought someone else was going to have glass. So the, the small occasion where I don't have a glass, I, I want to kick myself because I'm like, I just don't. No. And there's nothing like, there's nothing inherently wrong. You could still drink it and enjoy it. But in my head, I'm like, oh, I can't do this. It's painful. If you, if you want to take I notes. like I've lost you, 50% of enjoyment. If you want to take notes on a beer, you need to pour it in a glass. That's like the bottom line. You can't do but, it out of a bottle or can. Funnily enough, my first step wouldn't necessarily actually be to pour it in a glass. My first step is to take the photo. And the reason I do the photo... Before you've poured it into a glass. No, 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 no. That is the first step, but that's not the very right. first step. So right. the very first step for the photo yeah. is I sort of look at the label and I go, okay, uh, it's wildflower lager. How do I want to take this photo? I will okay. stage the photo. Okay. Um, sometimes, if you can see it behind me, if you watch the video, that white box there, that's a photo box. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a cheap one off Amazon. I'm not pretending like I've got they the, do the really job. high quality one. It does the job I need. And I don't genuinely tend to use it like all the time. Yeah. When it's nice out and it's summer, I like to take photos outside. Um, 
sometimes I'm just not fussed about taking a good photo and I just want to get a photo because yeah. if it's just for me then like I don't really care um I reserve the photo box if I'm trying to do something specific but I've got a lot of vinyl figures I might try to use a vinyl figure if it matches the can or if I'm doing a beer and board game thing I might match that if I'm doing a pairing um wildflower lager I might have a bunch of wildflowers growing outside and it might be a really nice day so I will go and I will get the photo lined up of what I want then I pull the beer <laughs> that's step two is of step one is that's very it. that's very influencer of you to stage your beer photo um, to be fair I don't think it has anything <laughs> to do with that as much as it does that I like really you like doing photography I really enjoy yeah. amateur photography you wouldn't necessarily <laughs> know it from like my beer photos but I have like a whole separate Instagram that I made for travel photos RIP being able to travel um <laughs> I had a whole thing for all the like photos I took while I was traveling and stuff like that because yeah. I genuinely just like see something and I'm like, I want to capture that in a photo. So I really like amateur photography. I said not claiming to be amazing at photography. Um, and so that's why I care. Like that's an element about the stuff that I really care about is getting a nice photo out of it. Yeah. So you might not know from my beer photos, <laughs> but I do genuinely do that. So, so sometimes I will put the effort in to yeah. stage a photo. So I started kind of putting extra accoutrements in my beer photos at one point. And love that word accoutrement. accoutrement. <laughs> I started doing it, like staging it and making it look interesting. And I actually had people message me and go, Stop doing that. I like that your photos are just the beer. Um, so I did because I quite like that they're just the beer as well. Um, my setup, so if you're on the video, right behind me is kind of a grey plastic piece that kind of looks like a wall. Um, I use that for my beer photos. I did. So originally I used to do it on my kitchen table. Sometimes you just can't get like a nice clear area with nice light. Um, and that's, I think if you want to take really nice, clear beer photos, try and make sure you've got some good light. I find that difficult because often I'm drinking in the evening, so you can't use daylight. Yeah. Um, my garden's not particularly interesting. So there's nowhere that I can kind of nestle the beer that, you know, looks interesting. Um I used to try, I used to have a picture propped up on the table behind my beers to make them a bit more interesting, but it kind of distracted from the beer. So then I invested in a light box. Um, I have one of those little light boxes. I found that when I had slightly taller bottles, I couldn't get the picture that I wanted. That's the struggle I have with yeah. this one sometimes yeah. is it's really difficult because you can see... Yeah. Uh, you can see like corners and things like and, that yeah. yeah yeah so I then moved on and then as well because I started doing the beer school stuff so I was kind of setting up a bit of a studio space that you see here um I have I've now got like a ring light and two softbox lights I've got fancy lights but that's because I'm doing videos as well but that's been really helpful for my photos because I've got this kind of plain background that I put them on and then I do the lights from different angles um obviously you don't need to get that fancy but one of these kind of just plastic backdrops you can get like they're just photo backdrops you can get them off of amazon literally um, i used all my beer labels yeah and i used yep. a cardboard box yep. that i got need. from the beer delivery um and i sort of cut that this was like ages and ages ago maybe this yeah. i got the light box and everything else um plastered my beer labels there now you have to be careful because certain labels will like clash with it so you yeah. just have to know again I think it comes down to like I appreciate obviously people tell you I like that your your photos are straightforward and and to be fair like I do tend to take like a straightforward photo yeah. and some like stage photos but the stage but photos it depends on what you balance. like I think it's the can, yeah it's the balance of not making things too busy yeah um but also like getting colors that match with your label that complement your label as, yep. as the background like oh you don't want to put a yellow label on a yellow background like that is unless it's a contrasting shade of yellow yeah. but you don't want to match it the same exact color and you don't want to you don't want to distract from the color of the beer like if you've got certain colors behind it you might not get the full proper color of the beer either yes completely yeah. um so yeah i mean like i i just made that one day yeah. and i found that actually um when you take it from the right angles or the, the right beer and it and it all worked out like it looked really good in the background um but yeah I think there's there's lots of things you can do with the photos but for me that is my step one is I stage the photo then I take the photo and the reason that I do that not that we've done that right now um is because obviously head on certain beers only lasts so long and yeah. I want to catch it the rest of the process can take quite a bit 
I want to capture it when it's freshly poured. I don't really want to sit there 10 minutes later trying to get a photo yeah. when it's all sort of the dust is settled, for lack of a better <laughs> way to explain it. The head is settled, as it were. Um, I'm just going to top this up a little bit. Talking of heads, I'm going to top my beer up so it's got a nice head on it. Um, sure. Mine didn't really have one, to be fair. Which oh, brings mine's got up a lovely foamy head on to it. To be fair, I was very, how I poured it was very, um, yeah. and it's been sat for a while now anyways. But that kind of brings us to, I guess, what what my second point is, and I don't know what your step two is. For me, it is looking at the beer. Um, I will literally sit there and just jot down every single description that I can come up with, whether it's something that's like this colour is this or it's similar in color to this object or there's the carbonation bubbles moving at that or it has this much head and the head doesn't last very long or it lasts too long not that there's too long or you know or there's lacing (laughs) is the word you want (laughs) yes but I don't when I'm writing it down right when I'm making my notes in the first Mm. instance I don't sit there and for me I don't sit there and do more elegantly phrased stuff okay because I just want to jot down everything that I see on first glance. I will go this color, this, 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 this. And I won't even do complete sentences most of the time. It will just be, here's everything that's popped into my head. Okay. What is your step two? So um, I think it's also important to note that aroma, though I do, so I'll do appearance and then aroma and then taste. Aroma particles are quite volatile. So you can, like, as soon as you open it, you might get a, whack of something and it's important to take note of that then because you might then not get that in the glass because it may have disappeared by that point um I then do look at it I have you know I have now a process from having taken qualifications and um I look at the color and the clarity of the beer I take in the head its color its density like is it rocky is it foamy is it thick and moosey um is there no head at all is it persistent is it uh lacing as it goes down the glass you know all of that and then the carbonation is a carbonation can you see it what the bubbles like um etc and i do use particular language because that's the language that i've picked up from the qualifications that i've taken so I kind of follow like what you touched on where you said you sort of look at it. It's like sight aroma tape. Like I, but I follow that same pattern because then my step two is the aroma, but it's interesting that you say like when you first open it, you'll take a note of what it is because I do that, but I do that mentally. Yeah. Yeah. You don't necessarily need to write that. I don't, I I write it down, but I won't write that down until step three, which is when I actually go and look at the aroma and I will literally do like that. When it first opened, I will jot down, first open, this is what it smells mm-hmm. like. And then I'll do sort of that first pass where you're just like, okay, just run it sort of under. What do you get from that? The drive-by. The drive-by. I like that. The drive-by. Um, I'll do a drive-by. Yeah. <laughs> and then that makes me sound way more hard than I am for sure. Uh, then I will do the more like direct over, over the glass mm-hmm. smells. Um, and then after I'll kind of do the handover swirl sniff sort of thing um, and that's kind of what I do as my first part of thing and again I do that same approach I don't use the technical language per se not that I always use technical language by any means but I will just literally jot down what comes to my head what it makes me think of anything and everything that I think of that is in my head I just brain dump pretty much that's all I can refer it to is a brain dump So when it comes to you capturing your aromas, like, do you do things differently to that or? Um, So I, I will always do a swirl and sniff because I think you get the most aroma out of that. I will almost always do a drive by um, to pass in the glass under your nose. Um, And then if it's, so we're currently drinking a lager. Generally lagers are going to be, are going to be less complex because of, the way that they're created with the lager yeast which ferments clean so there's not as necessarily as much going on in them but there can be um if you're not getting a lot from it that's when i start using other aroma techniques so i'll do short sniffs with my nose in the glass a long sniff with my nose in the glass 
Um, there's also my absolute favourite because it makes you look like a proper beer geek is you take a short sniff and then pull the glass dramatically away from your nose because the wine taste is like doing that. that oh, the drama. Really, it's so <laughs> good. Just make sure you don't like slosh your beer everywhere when you do it. What's the problem you if you pour it too high and then you start doing Take a that. sniff and then pull it away because then you're getting kind of that hit, but then you're getting the what you get from the distance as well brilliant i love doing those those sometimes sometimes it's just really fun <laughs> just to do do all the things but i will always recommend that you do a swirl and sniff because that will get you the late because there are layers in beers you're going to get you know the top note which is the one that straight comes out you're going to get the middle notes which are probably like more accessible but there's going to be some deep notes in there that you need to properly get your nose right into and um jen blair um who is hot on sensory um check out her instagram which is under the gemfluence um she's also a podcast. Like that name. <laughs> she's, she's also a podcast presenter she's there uh, from false bottom girls um and she calls it what the bees shouting at you what the bees saying to you and what the bees whispering to you and i think that's really good to keep in your mind when you're writing your beer notes like quite an interesting way points. to phrase it yeah <clears throat> because yeah it's true i mean it's kind of like what you captured when you said yeah you know when you do like what what forward is it like what's yeah. leading it that's yeah. kind of like what's what it shouting, shouting. At you? it's yeah. shouting you know raspberry yeah and when i but when actually, i started doing that i didn't have words for it so when jen was talking about that one day i was like oh that's what that's what i do that's what i do and it's about shouting talking and whispering to you i haven't drunk this yet can we get into the drinking now i haven't either but <laughs> Can I just do a check on the smell with you? Yes. It's interesting. And yeah. I don't know, is it? I'm just like, I don't know if mine's Go like... on, say it, because I'm waiting to see it. I'm wait- I think you're going to say the same thing as me. Well, I don't know if I'm going to say the same thing as you. But I, I also do that thing where I go back to the bottle and, yeah. and do that as well. So like, I will go back to the bottle. And the reason I did it on this one is because when I smelled it in the glass... I don't want to say it. It almost smells a bit chemically. Yeah, it smells a bit medicinal. <laughs> and I it was like, smell a bit I don't want to say it. But I think <laughs> that's so. But I don't wrong. think it's. I don't think that's. I don't think it's an off flavor. I think it's because it's got wildflowers in it, and I think yeah. we're getting like a blossom or a floral, like orange blossom, <gasps> often presents to me like savlon. <laughs> so and I think that's just so. So it will come off as medicinal to me, but I think it's the wildflowers in it. Uh, and the forage flowers are coming across as that aroma so yeah I mean that's that was where my mind was at but it was like I didn't want to say chemically because I was like I know how this is going to sound when I say it out loud Um, but that's why I sort of took a smell of it and was like it smells a bit chemically but not doesn't smell like off per se and I was trying to think like oh it does have a very light like floral yeah. element to the smell and I was like I wonder if that's what it has to do with so I was like let me just go back before I have a sip of this and go back to the actual bottle and when you smell out the actual bottle it smells it different doesn't, doesn't it have that same smell no. at all which I find really interesting but you've got to remember that in here there's potentially yeast sat at the bottom there yeah. as well that is true and that's not in your glass so yeah it's really interesting yeah. it's just I can like picture like like you said like little wildflowers yeah Okay, I'm tasting this now because okay, I've been waiting go. too long. Because the next step is taste. Ooh. It does taste like, I feel like it tastes like wildflowers. It tastes, <laughs> it does. I feel like it tastes like there's a meadow. No, there's no words, like there's no technical and it's word not that like, I can think of because it's, it's not, not like unpleasant. floral. It's not unpleasant. Like, I wouldn't even say like, like I wouldn't even use the description floral because it feels like. I mean, I think it is floral. Well, yeah, but it's not what I'm when I'm like when I'm drinking that. Yeah, my brain just goes field of wildflowers. Like it doesn't actually. Right. Go, so this oh. is why. This is why um, I'm an advocate for beer vocabulary because we all have different. We all have different experiences. We all have different histories, and it could be like one of my favorite things to say is you could taste this beer and it could remind you of grandma's perfume. Yeah, but if you're talking to someone, you don't, and say you say, well, and you say this reminds me of grandma's perfume. That doesn't mean the same thing to somebody else. 
So if you want to be able to speak to people about beer and to be able to pick beers that you're going to enjoy and convey what you want to other people, you've got to use universal descriptors. So yeah, this does take, it tastes like, it smells like a meadow. It tastes like a meadow, but that then the equivalent of universal language on that is floral. I think it's just when I use the term floral with other beers, Mm. they land differently yeah in my mouth how this one is like the fl- the the element of floral so then you got to pick it apart different and that's why i'm like oh like it's so different to other floral beers that i'm like it reminds oh, me of like walking describe into- it and all like- i could say is like wildflowers <laughs> it reminds me of walking into a florist yeah yep 100 percent 100% that type of like and like floral. if you're writing a long form beer review beer review beer notes like you want to put this in a blog post you can totally talk that's the kind of stuff that story I story about you know it reminds me of walking into like walking into this florist it reminds me of walking through a field near my nan's house that's in the woods and that had like a floor of wildflowers and this is reminding me of that right now that's your long form content right there and I think that's sort of to get on to sort of the capturing the taste part, like that's maybe another thing like we differ is I, I will write that stuff. So yeah. uh, like I said, I brain dump and I don't write technical things and I make it as short as possible. But in this instance, I would put reminds me of, yeah. you know, a forest well, if it's, or something if it's like, like that. This one, which has has produced quite a vivid image for me that isn't like a normal like my usual beer descriptors and universal descriptors I will make a little note of that as a like a side note to myself because that's interesting and it's you know it's something that you want to remember when you go back and you're like oh yeah that wildflower oh yeah that remind that wildflower lager reminded me of you know walking to a florist or walking in the woods so I do make those little notes and keep them yeah I mean that's the kind of stuff that I do write down but when I when I go about tasting it as well like I'll, I'll take a few sips and I will jot down before getting into unless it's something that's a really overpowering memory or connection yeah. I will just do again the same thing brained up jot it down in as few words as possible just every descriptor that comes to my mind I write that down then I'll kind of take a few more sips and I'll let it sort of settle and then I'll go back and go okay has it changed at all and I'll make a note if it's like here's Here's what it is. And then at this point, a few sips in, it changes to this. And every time it sort of changes again, say, you know, three quarters of the way through, okay, three quarters of the way through, it's changed again. And I will make that clear distinction in the taste. And I will write down at that point, like, okay, you know, this is now the connection I'm making to it. Um, It's like walking into a florist or walking in a field or something like that. So that is, that is what I do my tasting. Do you tend to sort of go, fall through the tasting like throughout the whole way do you take notes throughout the whole way of drinking or mine is not that involved really yeah no like so I'll do my tasting I'll take my notes and I'll be like right done now I'm going to sit and enjoy this beer if it then you know if it's something where it does change as you go through like sometimes steps as they warm you're going to get more um as you've had a few more um sips of it your palate will change and like you know gets acclimatized to it like in sours you have to have like a few sips for your mouth ph to balance to it and be able to taste it like i'll I'll update things like i might be like oh this is a you know to me this is a four out of five and i'm like actually you know by the end of it i'm gonna up that or by the end of it like when i first have it i'm like oh yeah this is great but if like a whole glass is then as it goes down it's a bit of a struggle i might knock some points off a bit so i do change it but generally like i'll do my tasting and then I'm I'm pretty much done unless I need to add or add or change anything. Like I'm not constantly revising it as I'm drinking the beer. Right, interesting. Yeah, I definitely go for that, which is why sort of going mm. on to my next step, which is step five. Like I don't just wrap it up there. So I've gone through, I've had a few sips and I've gone, okay, very note involved. that down. Note that down. And then I'll kind of run back through and I'll be like, actually, do I still agree with what I put down as the smell? Do I still agree with, you know, the, the visuals? Self-editing Has anything changed? yourself. As you I do. I, I completely do. I kind of go through. And this is what I mean by it's really difficult to have the space in my journal because the way I structure it, it's like, you know, I have just open up a random page. Here I've put the the, the taste. Yeah. Here, here I put the, the visual. Here I've yeah. put the aroma. Here I've put the taste. I'll write down my notes. 
and then I'll leave like two or three lines okay. and I'll go to the next one and then I'll leave two or three lines and I'll go to the next one but then when I go back and I go back through it sometimes I don't add anything and it's yeah. fine so I don't want to leave too big of a gap because then I've wasted some space right but then also there's other times like I know with the taste that that's something that's probably going to have a lot more added to it than yeah. maybe the visual or the aroma or anything like that but I do go back and I go back through it all over again um that's interesting throughout the whole time of me drinking for the most part I think there's yeah. times where it's like the more complex it is the more I revisit it yeah. the more straightforward it is which doesn't make it bad because sometimes actually what I want is exactly what it says in the tin I yeah. don't want it to be complex um if it's really straightforward and it's not as as complex and yeah I could finish it and have half a beer still left in my glass um but then I think that's also why I added a note section to mine mm. Um, I have additional notes and I did that because I was like if I've not left enough space and I have more I want to say about it as I'm drinking it or connections I'm making with it that's where that goes is in the additional notes section Um, but yeah that's that's what I do I just run back through it all again and and make more changes do you just go that's it I'm I'm done now and and I enjoy the rest of the beer yeah pretty much unless something particularly sticks out to me that I'm like oh yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna change that yeah I'm, I'm just done do you leave it so do you leave it as however you've written it is exactly how you've left it yeah pretty much because see then I go back and I might not go back right then and there so my last step is I will go back and I will do properly right in it so if it's like I said if it's not as complex of a beer and I've yeah. still got half a beer left I might start writing it out then and there okay um if it's something that is more complex and it's taken me the whole beer to do it and either that or I just can't be bothered to write the rest of it at that moment yeah um, I will leave it and and that's the trap I got myself into where I was doing too much of that writing and yeah. I wasn't actually writing I couldn't keep up with how yeah. much I was taking notes because we'll talk about that sort of later in the episode but for me it's like I just wouldn't end up writing it anywhere it would just that's how it turned into yeah. notes just for me because yeah. I was like I'm not gonna sit and write all this out unless it's something that I found was like a really good compelling beer that I wanted to write about yeah. <clears throat> did it start to feel a bit like a chore yes it absolutely yeah. did like I said I've, I've got and more I to think... say on it yeah okay later because yeah. I've got a whole I've, I've written notes about that and I think it's important to talk about that separately yeah. Yeah. Um, about it be put a pin in that oh, just yeah, because that I think that's a really good conversation to have yeah um because there's some tips that I've got okay. and we'll see yeah um but yeah I found that really interesting that you were just like that you, I, I wish I had that ability yeah. to just go through and go it's not that I'm indecisive no. it's that no, I no. become I become very you're being very oh. analytical about it. Yes. You're really picking it apart and making sure, like, and you've done it, and then like you're checking your hypothesis, and <laughs> making sure that you were right about it. I see what you're doing. Or like, I'm like, oh, has it changed? Okay, yeah. I want to catch that. And and yeah. I'm so like, you're I'm, to, you're I'm a person that's all very much the information. Exactly, I'm a person that and you'll know this about me. Other yeah. people not. I'm a person that's very much like, I'm gonna do it, or I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. I'm not a person that, and I'm not. This is not me for anyone that's listening. This is not me saying you are not. <laughs> no, no. You have that. Like, you no. have. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is for me, I can't do it halfway. You've seen this with me picking out fancy dress costumes. Yes. <laughs> I'm either going all out on a fancy dress costume or I'm not going out at all. Like I don't want to do something that I've just made a sad attempt at and mm. I've not followed through on. And I think that carries over into a lot of stuff I do. And that's also why I find that sometimes I tend to not do things at all. Yeah, because I'm like I mentally don't have the energy to go full out, so I just don't bother at all. I've made all these notes, I've gone all out on the notes, but I can't be bothered to go all out on what I'm writing about. Yeah, so I don't bother full stop. Interesting. Whereas I feel like you're able to commit. You're able to go. I've tasted this, and that's it. I've committed to that. I, yeah. I just can't do that. And I think I did. It wasn't until I started like looking at uh, the beer judge certification program and and um, uh Jen had done a little bit of um free training on it over the summer if you check out her her YouTube channel which is under the Gemfluence I'm pretty sure that all of that is up there for free if you're interested in having a look at it um if you are a BJCP judge they are trained to judge the beer within 15 minutes 
Oh, that would stress me out. out. That would stress me out. out. I couldn't. I, so, I'd like, be like, what if first, it changes? Like when you first start, you have like you can you have to kind of build yourself. You can like take your time over and blah blah. blah. But that you should be doing it in under fifteen minutes because you got samples. You got a taste. You haven't got time to be faffing around. Like doing that. fifteen That's... minutes done move on to the next one that's really a stressful situation for me i feel like but it's not uh but it's you are judging for competition and to give people critical feedback like you're not sitting enjoying your beer at home so i guess that's i guess that's it that's the and and i think part of it is like the approach of how we learn to do them like for me i didn't you were doing it for a particular reason yeah me i was mine was strictly like i enjoy it i want to dig deeper into yeah. the taste that i enjoy it wasn't like an educational thing or anything like that yeah so i think it's obviously like the learning was just me being like what do i actually care about what do i want to capture what do i find interesting about the beers cool i'm gonna write all that down and it's but, how yeah. you how you enjoy doing it if you enjoy spending lots of time picking your beer apart and writing that all down cool if you just want to crack it out and drink it cool like <laughs> Do what I, makes you happy. That's the whole point of craft beer. <laughs> I can't even say that I enjoy doing the, like all the rice on it. <laughs> I feel like you've you've made a rod for your own back now, though. With it, that's the problem. That's the problem. Is <laughs> like, like you've just told everyone like you're not committed to what you do, but you've committed. No, to no, it. no, no. I am committed to it. That's that is the problem, though. Is like that's why I find again. We'll talk about it later. That's why I find that I, I really struggle sometimes. Is because I'm like now that I've done it this way and this is this is in my head what I what I do like I find it really difficult when you have a a process that you've done for so long like it's so difficult to change that yeah. up muscle memory and all that and also just because then I feel like when I'm stripping it back I'm like oh I, f- I really genuinely feel like I've just taken away from what I like it feels like I'm not doing something complete now yeah. and then because I feel like I'm not doing something complete even though that's not true feels like I'm not doing something complete so that's frustrating to me so I just have to go all out and it's not even that it became something that I genuinely feel like I was for a while I was like I can't I can't be bothered to do it but yeah we'll get on to that um so moving on to the next beer do you want to sort of introduce what the next beer is yes um our next one is a wit beer called understanding people from our friends Mirakai, we do love a bit of their beers. Um, so we picked this one because obviously the first one was a lager. This one is an ale. And so the yeasts that are used in these, and particularly in a wit beer, the yeast strain is important in that style of beer. So we thought we'd have something a little bit different because that might make your tasting process and what you have to pick out of what's in your glass more interesting. Let's give this a pour. I've I've done mine already. I cheated. Ooh, mine's a bit warm, so it's a bit foamy. It's also another consideration: the temperature of your beer. Yes, and also as I so I cracked mine. And I took a photo just before we did it. Magic of editing and all that. And one thing that actually that I thought of that we should have pointed out as well is the importance of clean glassware when you're taking a photo. Yes, <laughs> because it's really fucking annoying when <laughs> even when it's like really when it's clean, but you just have this like one persistent bubble and you have to do the give a little shaky swirl. shaky, and it's just like oh for God's sake. Um, I do I do the swirl the light tap mm-hmm. anything you can but I mean there's Sometimes really Im- importance of that for sure and um yeah just kind of like knowing how you want to take your photo like I would say get your get your camera before you pour it for me sometimes I use my proper camera usually I can't be bothered so I just use my phone camera but I use the pro mode on it um which means you have to kind of adjust your shutter speeds and everything like that to the lights and and all that that stuff um so I make sure that that's open and ready to go before I pour the beer as well because once you pour the beer and then you're faffing around with like let me change this let me change that setting then you miss like the actual nice looking shot of it so that's something that I didn't actually call out um which I think is perfect because I think this next section we can give you some good top tips that we've learned yeah. along the way uh that's definitely mine for for photos as well give, if you're using your phone give your lens a little wipe oh you need one of those um like microfiber not microfiber. I mean if you want to get those glass cleaning if you want to get posh about it just use your sleeve otherwise like <laughs> give a little wipe because there's probably debris on it from the day or your pocket or whatever oh that sounds so filth 
That sounds absolute filth. Honey lint. Oh, I know. We say I was probably debris on it from the day. It's like, oh, it's had a tough day. I've had a tough day. Let's get into this beer. <laughs> <laughs> so the aroma on it. Yeah. Definitely like the the banana bit of, bit of spiciness to it for me. So I don't get banana off this one. Oh, I do. Really? No, I, I get I get coriander. I get coriander. I get like spiced and I get a little bit of banana on there. Getting more pear. Oh, I'm not getting pear at all. Mm. Interesting. It's more floral. Get more floral notes from the swirl and sniff. Mm. It does change, obviously, when you do that. Interesting. There's a bit of peppery spice in there. I don't get peppery spice as much as like that. Like that coriander is just really for me coming out quite strong. But I love it. I love the smell of it. That's nice. Oh, top tip if you're tasting, don't fill your glass all the way up so you don't spill it. Oh, God. There's nothing worse than when you swirl it and it's just like. You've ah. got to wait. So you've got to weigh, weigh, up the, you've got to weigh up the pros and cons. Do you want to fill it up so you can get a nice photo? Do you want to have it only half full so that you can taste it? That's true. Mm. That is it's true. A tough one. It's a tough that is, one. That is difficult. I feel like it's like just really light. Mm. It's a nice light. I do get a little bit of floral actually in the taste on mine. Yeah. Um, and I definitely get spice, like a spiciness to it. Again, I don't really get too much like pepperiness. Again, I think it's kind of more coriander-ish type things. But then I don't know how much of that is aromas coming in and then be a mistake. Well, taste, I mean, that can but, happen as well. But what we consider flavor is a combination of taste, mouthfeel and and aroma. So speaking of mouthfeel um it's definitely sort of like in terms of like consistency it's on the sort of thinner it's it's on the thinner end but I wouldn't say I feel like what's really frustrating is sometimes people will take a thinner beer and they'll mistake that as like oh it's lacking flavor it's like it's not lacking flavor it's just physically thinner (laughs) and so it's not you're not chewing it like you are with something that's like really really thick yeah um but I mean, it's still full of flavour. It's just uh, on on the on the thinner side, which is I, I I would imagine that's probably expected. I don't find it thinner. I find that it's do got, you not? A, no, I find that it's got like it's not you know chewy thick like a imperial stale, but it's not meant to be. It's a wit beer. Um, no, exactly. I think it has a touch <clears throat> of creaminess to it because you've got the proteins in there from the wheat, which is to be expected for the for the um for the style. And this is the thing, and this is why it's important that if you're getting into, like, if you want to get into this properly, you really want to start, like, picking beers apart. It's a really good idea to have a little bit of an idea about beer styles, because knowing what could be in your glass is going to help guide you and let you know. Like, if you don't like it, that's fair. Like, everyone can have, yes, yeah, I like it, I don't like it. Um, I don't think you can turn around and say, this is a bad beer just because you don't like it if it's not to your taste if it's versus... not to your taste there's this is like this is semantics here that i think a lot of people miss there is a big difference between i don't like it and it's a bad beer it's not to style yes do you know what the style should be anyway and there can be overlaps in styles there can be innovation from breweries like belgians don't they don't they go they scoff at beer styles they're like what are you talking about <laughs> i just brew beer that i like like you know I like that i like that yeah they, they don't care they're just brewing beer so you know so turning around and saying you know oh it's not style or there's better versions of the style out there you better have a really good grounding in beer styles <laughs> yeah and <laughs> that's i think your basis of saying that i kind of think my my number one top tip regardless of like what you're doing how you're doing it, it's like don't be afraid to google yeah um, if it's something that like I know there's been so many times I've said to you like oh the taste is on the tip of my tongue but I can't figure out what the word is that I want um a lot of times in that situation like if I'm not speaking to you and I'm at home I'll either so I've got the Randy Mojo taste and beer book this is literally the got one it on your book. recommendation if you are going to read only one beer book got then tasting beer should be <laughs> your book 
got markings all in it to make it easier but there to are through. there are lots of other amazing beer books that you should also read <laughs> completely that was just that was like one of the ones that you had recommended me yeah. so I went and I got that and I do like reference that sometime but also sometimes I just google like sometimes I would just be like okay what is the I'll just google characteristics of wit beer yeah and I will but I think the the thing you have to keep in mind with that as well though is you do need to know your sources and you need to know that they're reliable sources so, like you want to reference things like the BJCP website and stuff like that you don't just want to be like oh cool this is my mate's blog and he's saying yeah. this is what a whip beer is and therefore that's what it should the taste brewers like. Brewers Association also <laughs> have theirs um and breweries will know what they're talking about sometimes like, i'll just go on a brewery yeah, like if i've, if I've ordered a beer website. and i know that that beer is still up there sometimes i'll just or read the back of the label like sometimes i will just read the back of the label or i'll read on their website what it's about sometimes they do like blog posts on them and i'll be like okay what was actually intended here yeah um uh, actually oh that does describe what it is i'm tasting i just didn't i couldn't think right. of the words at the time and i think that you have to understand like, that doesn't make you stupid that doesn't make you uneducated that doesn't make you it doesn't make you wrong it doesn't make you wrong it's sometimes so, sometimes it's as simple it's just you've had a long day and you've had a brain fart and you can't think of the word that it is that you're looking to use but be it but flavor and taste isn't quantitative like it's not got set parameters everybody tastes differently <laughs> everybody enjoys things differently we all pick things up in different ways like there are people that are super sensitive to bitterness yeah. and there are people that are completely blind to other flavors and aromas. You cannot, you know, it's not number. This isn't numbers. This is sensations and triggering parts of your brain. Like it, you can't define it in quite such boxed terms. No. as that. So you have like how I say to do this is do your tasting. Don't read anything don't talk to anybody because we're very influential if like someone can oh, say so something much. you're like you're oh, like broccoli. oh yeah and I'm like uh, broccoli. and I pick then you'll pick that up if you read it on the can you'll pick it up so if you're really wanting to find out what you find in this beer do it as blind as you can um and then once you're like okay I've, I've I know what I'm picking up from this oh there's this flavor I'm not sure what it is then go and look up the beer style look up what the brewery says read the can or bottle um, read what other people have said um, find out what the hops are like the only time I ever tell people to do it the other way around is if you want to learn more about hops which I know a lot of beer people like to do and in that case I would tell you to go get a single hopped beer of that hop that you want to learn about find out what the characteristics of that hop should be before you drink it and then see how you're picking it up and how that goes with those that's the only time I tell you to do it the other way around because you're learning about what that particular ingredient presents like to you if you just want to know what's in your glass do it blind first before you start reading the news no exactly and and that's more what I was getting at was like that don't be afraid to google like mm. if you've done something and you're like oh I've written down I've written down these notes and I and I can't figure out what like there's something that I like I said it, it could be a sense of maybe you've just had a long day and you're like I can't think of what it is. I know that I know this but I can't think of what it is and I'm just mentally exhausted and I don't know then you go and you read the back of the can and it's like oh it's this this fruit amongst several others and you could be like oh yeah this fruit was like you said the one that's screaming yeah. and the one that's whispering to you is the one you couldn't put a word on but then actually when you went back and you read the label you were like oh yeah okay there's peach in that that's that's what I'm getting I'm getting the peach coming through and it, it's stuff like that no complete completely agree that it's the like you said you, you've got to do it yourself and then go back but I just think people shouldn't be afraid to sit there and google if they want to know like more about that beer if they want to know more about yeah. that style if they want to know more about what's in there because you've done it and then you're like oh actually I want to go back and revisit what I've done maybe you'll be in a bit more over the top detailed let me go out and look and because you're right it is very influential we we've, we've influenced each other when we've said like oh yeah do you taste this and I'm like yeah I definitely taste that now but you say broccoli and I'm like Fuck, broccoli yeah. like that was why earlier when you were talking about the Braybrook lager I didn't want to say anything until you decided what it was because <laughs> I didn't want to go it's medicinal and you're like yeah it's medicinal because that might not have been what you were getting but then also I was like I don't want to I don't say want to it. say it <laughs> I don't want to say it because a <laughs> the thought that popped into my head was more like the word I wanted to use was more chemically, but that's not yeah. what I meant. 
But also I was like, I don't want to say it in case it's because I could see that floral edge to it. And yeah. if you were getting it in a floral way, I didn't want to be like, yeah, that's what it is. And then you're like, oh yeah, I can get that now. <laughs> but as well, like my friend, my friend Liz, who doesn't drink a lot of beer, she really enjoyed the Braybrook barbecue hells he- Helles when we were at um, when we were at Bigfoot, and she very proudly went up to the bar and was like, I want another one of that. It tastes like soap. <laughs> yeah. And the guy looked at her like she was mad, and I was like, she doesn't mean soap. She means it tastes like lavender. And she that just means soap to her. She really liked it. She's ordering a pint. It's fine. Yeah, that that's the thing is it's, it's like you said, it's how you associate it, yeah. and sometimes how you associate it. And that's again, like I was like, I don't want to say chemical because I know yeah. like chemical sounds like the exact opposite. <laughs> sounds of what you sounds want, like an off flavor. I knew what I was thinking. Yeah, but it's trying to get that across. Like you wouldn't go up to a brewer and be like, yeah, it tastes chemically because that typically <laughs> tends know, to mean there's something like... wrong with it. But I was like, no, I know that there's nothing wrong with it, yeah. but it, it has that chemically smell, but it's not chemicals like I was like I don't know how to phrase this in a way that sounds not bad (laughs) yeah so right my other top tip I would say other top tip would be like don't attempt to review a beer when you're actually enjoying time with your friends not that you can't not that you can't do it but like if you take the more detailed approach like I do there's some people you have to know your audience that you're drinking with there's certain people like I know I can sit with you and we can be having a conversation and I can be like this or you can be like this. Yeah. And just this, boop, 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 writing down our notes. Yeah. And neither one of us is like, are you even listening to the conversation? Like we just know, oh, that other person's writing notes. But if you have friends that aren't so much in the beer world, yeah. like that's kind of a faux pas. Um, a, because you're going to make them feel like you don't care about spending time with them. B, you're not actually going to enjoy your time with your company as much um because you're going to be focused on writing your beer but then also you're only gonna have it's like you almost tend to have like a foot halfway in the door of each where you're like I'm listening I'm having a good time I'm having that conversation but I'm also focused on something else and you're not really focusing much 100% on either um so you're probably not going to get if you're looking to review beers in a certain way you're not going to get the fullness out of your out of your beer reviewing if you're around people that you want to enjoy their company or or don't understand what you're doing because like we if we sat there we could do it together like we'd have yeah. a conversation and we'd be making our notes doing our thing independently having a separate conversation and then every so often being like oh that tastes like that I'll make a note of that yeah. um but you just have to know who you're around when you're doing that I don't know have you have you had situations where it's been like oh god like this is why my beer beer reviews are really I've got down really short now because I'm, I've got down to fine art, so I can just do it. It's done. It's done. I can, yeah. My husband doesn't feel like I'm ignoring him <laughs> when we're at a beer place. It's just the two of us. They are done, sorted. Let's sit and enjoy our beers. As that's fair. Um, another one that I think we've both learned along the way is always have like kitchen roll or a tissue or a cloth or something like that to hand when you're opening a beer to take a photo because the last thing you want to do is stage a photo everything's ready to go and then you open it up and it just beer canos everywhere mm-hmm. and then you have nothing on hand to clean it up it makes a mess like you don't want to leave it and deal with a sticky mess later you just want to get it out of the way now if you have kitchen roll and you're prepped and ready to go like happy days you don't have to worry about that um and another bit on the photo taken aspect of it, I always recommend, and I don't know if you'd agree or disagree, having some unbranded glassware. <laughs> I love my branded glassware and I like using my branded glassware for the matching beer. Yeah. But also there's certain glasses where the image takes over a lot of it and then you don't get a good yeah. you do visual. Kind of need to find. So I've got these little tasting glasses from McColl's Brewery, which I absolutely love. Um, and you can turn them so that you can see a clear point. Um, there are some where there is stuff all, all, all the, way the way around. around. Um, or like, yeah. th- like half of it, but yeah. half of, like a full half. So when you turn it to the yeah. side, you can, you still, can still see, see half a bit of it. it. Yeah. Um, if I'm trying to get a good picture of the beer, and it's not that brewery's beer, I tend not to use that glass because, um, yeah, I like, I like you know, correct glassware. <laughs> um, and I, I will rather have a plain side. You can get, like, really good 
playing glassware sets in places like TK Maxx. And I think the best value I was looking um, for a blog post I did about starting a beer glass collection. Be warned, it will take over your life. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, if you're watching the video, all of Tori's glasses. Are I wasn't gonna. There. I wasn't gonna out myself. I'm outing yourself. Gonna... I'm outing you. I'm outing you. It's done. <laughs> um, uh, you can get plain ones in sets with different ones from TK Maxx. The best place that I think the most economical place I found some was eBay. You can get them on Amazon. Um, you can get flight boards, obviously. I like a little glass for tasting often, but my teku is always my go-to. Yeah, <laughs> I love a good teku, but then I yeah. do have quite a few tekus where I can turn them so you can't see. Yeah, so you can. Um, yeah. And and I tend to use, I do tend to use my tekus more for darker beers. Um, oh, really? Yeah, because I don't know. It feels like when I'm drinking a darker beer. It feels like they're usually the higher ABVs and I tend to feel like yeah. fancier. I'm like, oh, it's like a wine. I want to have it in my tech. So I will use a snifter for a dark beer. So a snifter, if people don't know what a snifter is, it's kind of like a brandy glass. It's like bulbous. And so that really opens up those lovely flavours. So that's that's top tip for if you're using dark beers. A snifter glass is the best one for those. I don't. If I don't do it. Got, I don't do it for reviewing. <laughs> I don't if do it for only... reviewing beers. Oh, okay. I do it because I want to feel fancy as fuck. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fair. <laughs> I've got I mean... my. I've got my snifters, yeah. but I'm not. When I'm doing it, I'm not sitting there and I'm taking everything in. That's just because I'm like, ha ha ha. I am. I, mean, I am posh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a, a techie does make you feel fancy. It does. It's it best, really. It's does. Best thing about techie. But yeah, I I mean, I've got ones that I can turn to the side so it's not that big of a deal. Like if it's a darker beer, it's a dark label, so you don't really yeah. tell that much. That's fine. It's more when it's like a lighter beer like this. It's yeah. a bit difficult if you can't turn it to the side. But yeah, that was definitely one that I noticed I thought I'd share with other people because it's something I don't think you necessarily think of until the point of which you want to take a photo yeah. and then it's too late. Um, yeah, I think taking in the lighting, like top tip is like you do need to have some type of like good light and if you really want to if you want to be more accurate in your description visually like you will I think you mentioned it already like yep. you do need good lighting what I found worked for me um you have to not kind of care about people maybe looking over at you but I've definitely used the torch on my phone yep and it's something that I don't think I, I suggest that and I know it probably sounds really obvious to people but I don't think it always is the most obvious thing when you're in the spot you're just like oh it's really dark in here I don't know and also for dark beers like they'll look black but if you shine a light through them you're going to see that they've got like a red highlight or a gold highlight or they're not actually black they're you know chestnut brown or something like that so putting that's what beer judges do they'll shine a light through it so using the light on your on your phone is a perfect way of doing that um and it's good to have a consistent background color when you are reviewing your beers so that you can get the proper color of it facts yeah facts be facts um when it comes to the aroma i've been told and i don't know if you've got anything to add to this but i've been told like when you kind of want to for lack of a better way describe it re-baseline your smell if something's particularly strong smelling and say you're doing multiple beers in a row you know uh what you do is you kind of like smell the inside of your mm -hmm. arm like just the the corner where your elbow yeah. so is some the... people will say that coffee will recalibrate because they they have that in perfume shops you can smell some coffee beans to recalibrate but really that even then you're picking up coffee obviously which could be a component of beer so <laughs> yeah, i guess that's true yeah, smelling your elbow is a good one and you I've don't really i've heard you could do a tissue as long as it's plain and it doesn't have anything well see sometimes tissues have got like a bit of you know stuff on them and stuff nowadays don't they so and you've got to not wear elbow. body you've got to wear not wear body spray because yeah if you wear body and spray and you're trying strong, to smell that strong perfumes or clones are gonna stop you from being able to really guess what's in your glass even sometimes if i've just washed my hands and i've come back sometimes i have to like kind of move my hand further down the glass so i'm not getting the soap smell from from my hands um you want to be somewhere where there isn't strong odors as well because that can influence what you're, what you're tasting i went to a beer tasting recently and it was in like a market <laughs> i ended up sat next to the fish counter <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no it actually, I was like oh but actually it wasn't too bad so it like because I was like mm, this could be interesting when I, I'm don't, doing the I don't like in. fish smells but at the actually best of times. They, it wasn't very pungent so it was fine but that yeah top tip don't sit next to the fish counter yeah <laughs> well, just that's just that's the top in. tip for life <laughs> I wouldn't want to sit no it's too much for me um when it comes to taste, I think it's worth noting, we've mentioned it before, what you eat changes sort of yep. what you taste. I mean, my my tip would be like, if you're focusing and want to do pairings, if you also want to be making sure you're getting the most of the flavor of your beer, you taste the beer first before you attempt to do yep. pairings. Because um, if not, you could taste something and then that could just change the whole, not, not maybe not wildly, but it can change the taste of your beer enough yeah. that um, are you really getting the actual taste of your beer? And good beer, good beer and food pairing should take in an intensity as part of that process anyway. Um, if if you sit there, you know, proper pub grub, um, having a packet of crisps while you're having your pint, the oil on the crisps can completely kill your head on your beer. So um, if you like, you know, enjoy your bag of crisps, but maybe do your tasting before you open up that bag of crisps. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good one. Mm. Um, and I know it's like important to have something that's very, very plain in between having yeah. beers. Good old like Jacob's uns- cracker, <laughs> like unsalted crackers. Yeah. Like you don't Saltines, want, yeah, America. anything, yeah, anything yeah. that's got too much of a taste to it. Uh, it's just not gonna. It's just gonna change how you taste the beer. Really, it's not gonna help you. You know, if you're hydrate. out just having a pint and having some snacks, like have at it like this is if you really want to like <laughs> this is if you're wanting to be very very specific. really pick apart what's in your glass before you kind of taint your palate with something else definitely yeah. um I think the other thing is for me my top tip would be like I know obviously we review things different but for me I would just be doing the brain dump of write down everything that comes to your mind and I would say be brutally honest like if you love something be brutally honest about that like even if the same word cut for me I think if the same word comes to your mind depending on how you write it obviously if the same word comes to your mind or even if it's something that's like wow amazing I'd be like write that down depending on how it is you want to obviously use the review if it's something that you really don't like I think it's worthwhile being brutally honest about what it is you don't like because at the end of the day when you go to write your piece or whatever it is you're doing you can edit that and you can make it you can kind of tailor it to sound uh, the way you want it to read, but you can only do that accurately if you've been brutally honest about what you loved and hated about that. So that is something that I think is, I use hate in a very light way because I, I don't mean of like what you've disliked about it. Like yeah, if it's something that's not a taste that appeals to you. Yeah. Why? And, re- and like reiterate, like just because you don't like it, it doesn't make it a bad beer. Unless there are actual faults and off flavors with it like you know when we had the pickle beer it was, I was a, like it was a very well, well made <laughs> beer because it was exactly what they said it was going to be it was not for me no <laughs> i will not be drinking that again but it was a bad beer on i have full-on posted like stuff like let's take the pickle beer for example yeah. i have full-on posted stuff like i this is like a five star yeah hated it yeah because i hate pickles and it tasted spot on like pickles. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. That's like what they I said it was going to taste like. That's what it tastes like. Exactly as it says. for doing that. I don't like it. <laughs> exactly as it says on the tin. <laughs> tastes exactly how it's supposed to taste. And it's not a taste that is for me personally. But stuff like that. But I think it's important to be sort of brutally honest with yourself. Yeah. Because if you want to write a really honest review, like if you are looking to actually do like a proper review of it, you want to put it up somewhere, you want to get, you know, your aim is to say your goal is to be writing for a newspaper or you want to maintain a blog post in order for you to remember something vividly enough for you to write about it I personally feel like you have to write down all those details that come to your head even if that's not your goal like if you're just tasting beer because you want to enjoy it developing your understanding of what's in your glass is going to help you to buy beers that you like all the time because you can blindly be buying this amazing hype beer that everyone says is the best beer ever and then you taste it and you're like "Mm, I don't really like that but you've been told that you should so then you're like oh well you know and then you end up spending more money on very similar styles yet you still don't like it craft beer is too expensive rightfully so 
because it is a you know it is an artisan product but it is too expensive for you to keep buying things that you don't like drink beers that you like be honest with yourself about what you like try different things you can find that out you might revisit day, something yeah you, can said revisit you might revisit things, it go back to it feel free to do that but if you just like stouts just buy stouts that's okay <laughs> drink what you love that's what we're here for it's definitely what we're here for and then I think the last kind of the last top tip I have and I think there's something you might be able to help out with mm. um it would be like if you are doing things like if you are deciding this is what you want to do on social media or you know TikTok or blog post or whatever I, th- I think it's really important to have a, a template and maybe even save like a core set of hashtags that you know you want to be using if that's how you want to do it um because it just saves time it makes it a quick and easy reference uh I had like a certain template at one point that I was even just saving and hashtags that I was even just saving within like a note on my phone because I was doing it a really like archaic yep. way of just like type it all out on my phone do this but I'm sure you probably use you probably have apps or something that can help you generate a form that's what I do but... I've got it in a note in Evernote I've got that's various what... different hashtags I'll go and copy and paste it because then you don't have to type it out again that is literally so what the Instagram coaches tell you to do because you don't want to have to type out every single one. Now, yeah, um, too much. There's various different things going on. If, like, let's not get too heavy into Instagram, Instagram coaching here, people. Okay. But um, if we're going, while we're talking about hashtags, hashtags will help you slightly. Um, if you really want to grow your account, they can help you a bit. Um, but you don't want to be getting those, like, you know, beer babe and craft beer, and you know. Um, uh, drink the you know cheers <laughs> and all of those little those ones there's going to be literally millions of posts under those that's not that's not going to help you get out there in front of other people because you've got to fight with all the other millions of posts if you really want to look into it look into like slightly smaller hashtags you've got to be a bit more niche about it if you're interested in this come and have a chat with me you know I was thinking the other day that maybe I need to get into like helping people grow their beer instagrams <laughs> Maybe that's what you definitely need. You're to interested do. in learning how to build your beer Instagram. Come find me at Love Beer Learning. We will have a chat. <laughs> but it's even stuff like that. Like, 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 you have to do your research on that kind of stuff. But definitely make your lot. life. And it's not a lot for. It's not for everybody. No, 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 no. And that is absolutely just if that's what you're wanting to do as yeah. an end goal. But make your life easier. Work smarter, not harder. Yes. Save your templates. Don't, don't do it from scratch every single every time. time because it's a lot it's just no don't do that yeah um but yeah that's all the top tips i had do you have any other any no that's other it that? i think that's it like we could get into instagram instagram coaching here but i'm not gonna do that's that not do that that's a whole that's a whole <laughs> that's other, a whole separate whole other beast thing. that's a whole separate beast and we said right at the start yeah absolutely <clears throat> we're not here to teach you how to be like a beer influencer beer personality by any means um but that's just even if you're a person that's not trying to have that status as an end goal if you just know that well i want my platform to be instagram doesn't matter if you're growing you're just doing it for you still save yourself the headache and just have a template (laughs) yeah 100 percent. right should we go get our beers yeah so we now have surprise beers for one another let's see what we pick (laughs) so on to our last beer do you want to go first as to to your beer and why you've picked so i have picked um a beer from old dairy who are local to me and this is one of their green hopped beers from this year and it is a fresh hopped ipa with green uk cascade hops that sounds gorgeous so the reason that i picked this is twofold <laughs> so um for reviewing beers you want to have you want to build your understanding your picture of beer one of the ways you can do that is by drinking is going and finding some traditional styles and some traditional versions of those beer styles that you enjoy by doing that you're going to find um kind of like a baseline of what one should be like You might not like that baseline and that's absolutely fair, but this is how you kind of build your knowledge of beers. Um, A really good resource is there's an app from BJCP. And if you go into that and you can, you can do this in their, in their style guidelines as well in their style guidelines for each style, there will be a list of commercial examples. 
And then you know that these are the ones that that style is based on. So if you can find them, of course, some of them are going to be more difficult to get hold of. There's going to be a lot of American versions in there that you can't get hold of. You know, some like proper, you know, out there German ones <laughs> that you're not going to find. <laughs> Austrian versions, blah, 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 you know, <clears throat> ones in deepest Russia, <laughs> things like that that you're not going to be able to find. But they're a good place to start to find that information. And I think, you know, check out your local breweries, see what things they're making. Traditional beer is not bad it may not it may just not be to your taste <laughs> so give traditional beer a go and also so this is made with english cascade hops go out and find interesting ingredients that you've not tried before and see whether you like them um so i've got this one and also this is green hopped so that is when the hops are literally picked off of the vine and chucked straight into the beer they're not dried uh, has to be done within 48 hours of picking them. It's a whole fun process. We've got a podcast about it that you can go back and listen to. Um, so different different ways of brewing beer, different ways of adding ingredients, different types of ingredients. Try all the things to broaden your beer knowledge and then you know what things you like and what things you want to write notes on. Plus keep those notes so you can go back and look at them. Keep a list of hops that you like. Keep a list of breweries that you like. Keep a list of styles that you like. And that's going to help you pick beers in the future and review it better as you go along. I think that's it. It's like I like to see the, the, the progress that happens as you sort of go, like when you first start writing things to like as you learn more of the lingo and as you learn yeah. more of like what you like and don't like. And as you, uh, like for me, I know like with a with a background of like having gone to school of writing, stuff, like I don't like to describe something the same way all the time yeah so I'm constantly like what is a new way that I can I want to say this what is a new way for me to express this without saying the same thing like I mean you can repeat every so often but for me I'm like how can I challenge I like to challenge myself and be like what's a new way that I can say that while still keeping it in a way that is technically that from a technical standpoint is is true yeah. um it, it's just like how do I structure the sentences so it's slightly different like that kind of stuff like I like to see how I've changed and developed and gone oh I started off writing like this and now I've developed and I'm writing like this because I've challenged myself to go outside my comfort zone talk about things in a different way and and structure it a different way and so yeah I think that's part of the fun of it for me um but yeah I mine I didn't pick for like a, a really amazing reason I just picked the and union Thursday dark lager um and it's just because I know we did a lager yep obviously we did a whip beer mm -hmm. but I wanted something that was going to be a bit dark but I didn't want something as I'm ill today I didn't want something that was going to be it's five percent I wanted a dark beer I wanted I wanted all those what I'm expecting is those like multi notes those like toasty multi notes and I, and I wanted that um but I didn't want to go like full stout or yeah. I didn't want anything that was like actual proper dark higher ABV type stuff which is what I've got <laughs> at the moment so <laughs> that was like my compromise and it was something that was just a bit different from what we've already yeah. had today yeah so yeah it smells nice I mean feel free everyone to go and find me I'm a woman's brew on untapped and look at my like early reviews and look at what I do now they are very different like you know that beer review back in the day that was like tasty <laughs> <laughs> and also some that were just like it's a lager I don't like lagers like I didn't like I didn't like lager I don't like lager I don't like lager it's boring blah 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 when you understand what a lager is what the possibilities expect, yeah the possibilities of lagers why they are the way that they are the possible like the possible flavors and aromas you're going to get from it and like when you really start digging into that then you go oh actually this is really interesting it's not your macro lager that doesn't taste of anything um i did a side note i did taste an american lager and a light lager yep those ones <laughs> the other day as part of my beer style training that i'm doing for myself did you check them in on untapped no because i know like <laughs> years ago no, like I, years I think, and years no, ago I, I have done because I, I am you know, guilty when I first of years and years ago I when i first got it checking in stuff like red stripe yeah and stuff and like 
on the odd occasion, not I've even that them. long ago, I've done it only because I was like, I've had it. I just yeah, I've like, had it, and I've checked it was it in. gamifying it, like yeah, untapped gamifies it. it. You will get them badges. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I need to check this in because this is what I'm having. I, when it? I when I first went on there, I'd been I'd been keeping. A I'm not list. proud I of think, it. <laughs> I think I've been keeping notes in like a beer notes app, but then they stopped updating it and it was difficult to get it off of again. Um, then I found another one and that they stopped updating that. And then that's when Untapped appeared. And I was like, oh, this is useful to keep all of the information in. So there's a lot that are all like logged in the day that I started Untapped. Because I literally just, and at one point I had a spreadsheet. I literally had an Excel spreadsheet with all the beers on that I'd had. And I put them all into Untapped so that I knew what I'd had um no I did I had them and I've actually I think I've got it over here I've got a BJCP score sheet for them because I filled it in interesting and they are they are very good examples of an American lager and an American light lager they just don't taste of anything <laughs> but they're not supposed to <laughs> yeah I guess <laughs> that's the beer style so they they are world-class right. examples of those beer styles but they don't taste of anything. And I'm used to my glass having like a, a million full things of flavor. Explode, exploding out of it. And they don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you um, I had some friends around recently and I was giving them my uh, some of my beers. I was, I was sharing out my beers and they're not normally craft beer people. I mean, he likes whipped beers and, and yeah, like anything with like wheat in it in general, he tends to like. But he's also kind of like a Foster's person yeah um so that's like his default if he doesn't have like his his vice beers or anything like that um and so I was sharing some of mine because I was like oh he might like the ones that I have yeah were obviously a bit fuller in flavor a bit more complex to it and he went we we had to catch up my husband had to catch up so he was like okay hang on because he was cooking so he had a few glasses behind like little taste glasses yeah um so our friend said oh should we open another one or should I have one of mine I was like I'll have one of yours for now you finish yours he'll have caught up we'll do another round um he had a Foster's and he literally took a sip and he was like oh it's so sweet and he was like I don't oh he's like I don't like it and I was like yeah I was like that's what happens when you go to drinking stuff that has like just more full-on taste to it. to it yeah <laughs> and and you'll you go back to your fosters like why do you think that I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot barge pole? yeah like it's just not something when you get used to not having it it's so difficult to go back to that type of taste I feel like it would be the exact same with Budweiser and Bud Light like I feel like I just couldn't I couldn't don't go taste back anything. to drinking that <laughs> they don't taste of anything but they are not supposed to like if you go and look at the beer guidelines for them they're literally like everything is low to none low to none low to none and in fact they are supposed to have a carbonic bite from oh, wow. the carbonation because you serve it incredibly cold it's really fizzy basically like sparkling water it makes sense now that you say that it does make sense yeah. that's really interesting though because i feel like when you think beer you're expecting something like all those people why like, can't beer taste like beer lovely... like you expect it to taste a bit different and... they're not the lovely soft and rounded bready toasty like floral and spicy german hop and lovely malt flavors that you can get from like a proper german beer that's really delicious like or that braybrook's knocking out or that um um utopian or donzoko or new uh, new barns are all making beautiful lagers over here like no they don't taste like that They don't yeah. taste of anything. It's just it's interesting that you're like, yeah, they're not really supposed to. If you want to sink that's the a bunch that you that you forget about, yeah. But if you want to sink a bunch while you know watching some sports, enjoy yourself. I just would. Str- I think I'd struggle massively yeah. to to go back. I never really liked them to begin with. I was more of like a hipster, perhaps blue ribbon, red stripe <laughs> person. Um, when I was drinking that kind of stuff, I was never really like a Budweiser or Bud Light unless I like somebody had it and that was my only option. My grandfather used to drink them, so it was like when you when you want to steal some beers out of the fridge when you're underage. Not that I recommend doing that responsible drinking. That would be like my option, and I'd be like, okay. I'm <laughs> from the UK. My granddad's drank um Courage Best Bitter. Uh, no, Whitbread Best Bitter. 
before it became a hotel chain, but it was actually a brewery. And right. Mackerson's Milk Stout. That's what my granddad's drank. I was far superior. I was set up. <laughs> far superior. Far yeah. superior to what I had. Um, but yeah, I think to, to take that pin back out of what we were sort of discussing earlier while we finish up the rest of our beers, um, you would ask sort of, did did things become more of a chore? And yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to sort of like hear your take on it. For me, I think the pros, the, there's pros and cons to sort of getting in more in depth to sort of, doing the writing and giving feedback on beers for me i i've not made it a secret i've said it many times i love beer comparisons i love getting all of a beer that's supposed to taste like a particular pudding or is supposed to have the same flavors or you know a bunch of stuff that's supposed to be the same and then not necessarily saying who's the best and who's the worst but comparing them to what they're supposed to taste like and to kind of see which one of them tastes the most like what they're supposed to which ones are really particularly enjoyable um I drank like all the ice cream pails that I could get my hands on including top rope and smothers to try to see sort of like actually which ones landed in their ice cream taste which ones didn't um sometimes I just like to do stuff like pints and panels we've talked about pints and panels before on Instagram um love the stuff that gets posted where there's like pairing suggestions I think that kind of stuff is really fun. Um, I've really, really enjoyed doing like beers that are uh, inspired by cocktails and taking um, cocktails, like making that cocktail. For me, I like to have that cocktail or the drink that it's supposed to be like a wine or a, or a spirit or something, noting down what the actual thing tastes like and then going away and drinking that beer and say, can I make that connection or is it just a fun name? is it a good beer with just a fun name like that kind of stuff yeah um but really like I've started kind of only doing proper writing in those settings now because when I started doing the beer writing of the reviews that I was doing in my in my beer journal it became very much like every beer I had if it was the first time I had it I'd want to write it down to the extent that I said that I was writing them down which was quite extensive um that's a lot a lot and it definitely gives burnout which is I think one of the cons if you don't moderate yourself or you don't pick and choose how detailed you want to be or or pick and choose which ones you want to be more detailed on um I know that I found like there would be times I'd be like I really want to drink this beer but I'm not in the mood to sit down and write or I'm having friends around and I'm not in the mood to sit down and write while they're there or any kind of thing like that so I would just be like I'm not going to have it and I put it away and there were so many times that I'd find a beer that had been sat there for so long because I just kept pushing it back until I was in the mood to write about it but I was so burned out that I didn't want to um I went from trying to post like a beer review every day I would have a backlog of all the stuff that I was writing about and I would do the review a lot more succinct than the initial notes because it had to fit on Instagram. And I would post like one of those a day from a backlog of stuff that I had written in an email. Um, And it just got so out of control. I couldn't keep up with it. It wasn't manageable. I kind of just started being like, it's more stressful than it is fun now. Yeah. But like you said, I couldn't pull back because I was like, I've always done it to this level. If I don't do it to that level, it feels like I'm not doing it properly. But then also I was finding beers were, being sat past the bbe because i was like oh i'll drink it next week i'll drink it next week i'll drink it next week and then stuff kept coming up um and that's when i think a top tip that i didn't say is if you do get into the social media aspect of it and you find yourself getting burned out i feel like we could do a whole separate topic on social media stuff yeah um if you find yourself getting burned out by that you need to like know when to kind of stop and take a break from it and be like i just can't do it anymore i challenged myself to be able to drink these beers without writing notes down and just being in the moment and enjoying them and enjoy sharing them with people um, that maybe don't even like craft beer per se, but would be willing to give it a try. The people that I'm friends with, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I found that I was writing less and drinking through more and actually enjoying when I was writing stuff like comparisons and stuff. It's a finding time to do it. Like if you're trying to drink six beers and review them all. Yeah. You can't do, do that, that at a time. So that's why my reviews are very short and I keep them quite succinct because I want to have that record for myself of the beers that I've had. Um, so I, I 
uh, my mine is very short I similarly though have beers put aside that I then want to make time for now I'm I am teaching myself about beer styles I'm going through the BJCP guidelines like I'm filling out a judging sheet about it like learning about the guidelines and everything with at least two versions of that beer style but I have to wait until I'm at a point where I can sit down and think about it and try them together so that's a whole separate thing from like just drinking beer um but that's why that's why mine are really short because I've got that into that I can take these notes really quickly I can do it stood at a beer festival this is what this is how forward I think it is this is what it looks like this is what it smells like this is what it tastes like done back in the moment the thing is I can do that and I have done that and I do do that but I don't feel that like I don't feel that I've fully like for me I feel like oh I've yeah. not fully covered everything that I wanted to cover on that I feel like I've just like that's when I become a bit non-committal about not non-committal but I feel like oh I feel like there's more I want to add to that and it right. just spirals from there so I can do the shortened version when I'm out and about and I do do that um but I just found that I've had to sort of tell myself that it's okay to like yeah not cut like get the main bits and it's okay not to like go fully and do all of it because yeah it's not my job um is it paying your bills no is it paying your bills then it don't matter (laughs) it's not paying my bills whatsoever um it was just a bit of fun um but that's that thing if it's a bit of fun that I really enjoyed when I was doing it in moderation the second I tried to keep up with it more or start doing it for every single one I just couldn't I couldn't maintain that anymore and I think it's really important to call that out and be like don't put so much pressure on yourself if you like giving feedback and this is something that you enjoy doing like I do don't put so much pressure on yourself to do it for every single one like pick the ones that are your favorite and likewise you know Joe, you said you've got someone some that you're holding for like specific things but you're not at the point where you can drink them yet and I think like if you're seeing they're getting past their BBE drink them because what's yeah. the worst case that happens you then go and say, oh, I have go to buy another, another one. one for that. Yeah, go There's find always going to be another one. There's always new beer. Always going to be another one. And you've got to remember that some of these accounts, like, don't compare yourself to other accounts and things. Some of these bigger accounts, they've got teams. They've got teams that are posting things for them. You know, there are people who are paid to be social media managers. That's a job. <laughs> so, you know, don't beat yourself up if you're not growing as quickly as you think or you're not, you know, you're not getting you know they're not set people aren't sending you beers or you know blah 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 all of this like do it for the enjoyment of it you should don't do it for you about it yeah you should do it for you it. you shouldn't do it for other people because if there you are people, start writing reviews like, for other people yeah there that's when I think you lose the joy investing money in this like you you can get a social media scheduling tool but it's going to cost you money so you know it depends on what level you want to be at some of these people are doing it as a job yeah and I, and I think, again, that's something that, like, we could go into a whole separate episode yeah. about the pressures of social media, the negative side of social media, the positive side of social media, all that. Um, but I do just want to say, like, even when it's not for social media, it was some of it, It like, with mine, it wasn't even necessarily stuff to be yeah. put on social media because it never even made it to social media. Because I would write up all these things and it would get to a point that that beer was now sold out and it was, a, it, you know, a month or two on. You couldn't really find it anymore. You couldn't get it anymore. So I almost kind of felt like what's the point of me posting this because I'm just basically telling you I had this really great beer and you can't you even can't go out and try it, it for yourself yeah, you can't get it and that's the moment where I was like you know what yeah. I'm gonna pick and choose if I'm really passionate about something I'm gonna make a note about it yeah. if I want to do a comparison I'm gonna write notes about it if it's just I want to have a few drinks and I want something that is particularly nice I'm just gonna drink it and I'm not gonna gonna worry too much about it yeah that's it do it because you love it not because you feel you have to exactly and also everything that we just told you you can completely throw out the window if yeah, you want, because do what it's you all about you and what works for you if you're we like say, know the nope. rules to break the rules i'm writing all of these notes and posting every day on instagram i'm posting it in, in all the forums on facebook you do what you enjoy <laughs> i feel like that's all we should that's just that's where the we end. should end it that's it that's don't the you end. enjoy the listen end. to our advice listen to our advice or don't or don't <laughs> That's me 90 90% of my yeah. of my life. Um losing my voice now, so 
Joe, so you're going to have a lot to say uh, if people want to talk to you about any of this stuff. Where can people? Yeah, speak? I, I am. Unfortunately, I am everywhere. <laughs> Um, if you want to talk to me, I am a woman's brew. That is where a lot of my original Beerstagram stuff is. Um, the podcast kind of taken over that account now, but that's fine. Um, I'm a woman's brew on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I don't really go on Twitter. If anyone's got Twitter tips for me, let you, me know. you feed you feed your uh, untapped to it, don't you? No, it goes to my. It goes, well, no, actually, yeah, actually, that does go to my a woman's brew one. But I tend to untick the box because I'm usually doing like proper later. <laughs> check check-ins and totally i'll do loads activity and chaos and i will do loads on a day just to get them out of the way and you don't want to be seeing all of my like everyone probably check-ins. thinks i'm a massive drunk yeah, when i check I, things I literally in. there's one guy Three on untapped <laughs> there's one guy on untapped who will message me every time i do it and just be like had a heavy night last night and i'm like no you know uh-huh. i'm just doing a check-in from loads like it was, wasn't funny you can, the tell, by the, you can <laughs> tell by the photos right. that there's all different like yeah. Fo- like yeah yeah, no. Anyway, <laughs> the joys of putting... This is what happens when you put, put yourself out on the internet. You're going to get people talking back to you. It's true. Um, so I'm a woman's brew on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you would like to come and learn about beer, you want to learn about beer styles, that's my top tip. Come and join me in my beer membership, the Beer Tent Society. Um, you can find information about that uh, with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, TikTok, and Pinterest at Love Beer Learning. Um, we also have a website where you can find out all that information. There's some lovely blog posts on there um, to find out about reviewing beers and beer styles and all of that. Just how to taste beer. That's at lovebeerlearning.co.uk. Um, email us at lovebeerlearning at gmail.com to tell us what more you'd like to hear about. And if you go to our YouTube channel where you can find episodes of this podcast, there is also a how to review beers video in fact, I might link it on here so that you can find it and watch that as well. Um, and finally, you can come join us on Patreon. Podcasts are not free to make, but we try and make it as free for you as possible. But if you'd like to support us in that, getting beer education out to everybody, then come join us on Patreon for £2 a month to keep Love Beer Learning and A Woman's Brew the Podcast going and giving you all of this wonderful information. Tori, where can they find you to give you some support about your incredibly long reviews well if you want to come and talk to me and you and you feel like you want support and you (laughs) and you feel like you're in my situation where or you found yourself in my situation where you were getting burnt out or you were pushing yourself too hard trying to go to the nth degree um you can find me on instagram at adventures underscore in underscore optimism.com um that's got links to anything else i do pretty much in that yeah profile. blog where she talks about beer that's really good yeah. oh, not doing great money years resolution so far <laughs> it's been busy it's been okay busy. don't beat yourself up about it that's it's it not pa- it's, not it's, it's not paying your bills it's not paying my bills better. pressure it's free zone um but yeah that that's it for me gonna go um spray my throat down with some stuff and drink the rest of this beer so on that note cheers, cheers.